Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how you can solve this system of three linear equations using matrices. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand first and then at the end of the video I'm also going to show you how you can solve this exact same problem using a programming language like Python because that's pretty much what everybody does these days. Okay so let's make a start. The first thing we need to do is just realize what we're after. So in this set of equations we have x, y and z which are our unknowns and what we're trying to do is find values for x, y and z that satisfy these three equations at the same time. This is why these are called simultaneous equations. So how are we going to do it? What we want to do is start by making a linear matrix equation. So we want to capture all of this in one equation and the way we're going to do that is by something like this. So we're going to have a matrix A we're going to multiply it by a vector of unknowns, u, and this is going to be equal to a vector of constants, k. So we're going to start with the matrix A. A is simply going to be the matrix of coefficients. So if you look at these equations here, the left-hand sides of these equations, all we're going to do is take these coefficients of these variables and just stick them into this matrix. So let's see how that's going to look. Let's open up a bracket. The coefficient of x in the first equation is 3, so that's going to go there. Coefficient of y in the first equation is 2, that goes there. And coefficient of z is minus 1. Okay, now moving down to the second row, we've got the coefficient of x is 2, coefficient of y is minus 1, coefficient of z is 2, and finally in the third equation we have the coefficient of x is 1, coefficient of y is minus 3, and finally minus 4 for z. Okay, and that is the matrix A. Now we need the vector of unknowns, and that's pretty easy because we have three unknowns, x, y, and z, so we can just stick them into a vector like this, x, y, and z. Cool. And lastly, we have a vector of constants, which is going to be the right-hand sides of our equations, just in a vector form. So we have 4, 10, and 5. And that is our vector of unknowns. So the reason we're doing this is so that we can set up and solve this linear equation. But how exactly do we solve this? Well, we need to rearrange for u, so u becomes a subject of this equation. Let's try that. u is going to be equal to a inverse multiplied by k. Now the reason we're multiplying with a inverse is because this is a matrix. So in normal algebra, if you were dealing with numbers, you could simply divide both sides by A. But because A is not a number, it's a matrix, you can't really divide by matrices. You have to multiply by the inverse. So that's why we're having to solve it this way. All right, so that gives us the equation that we are after. This is essentially what we need to solve. Now, everything is fine. The only problem is this A inverse. So we have the matrix A, but what we're looking for is the matrix A inverse. And that's where most of the work is involved finding this inverse. So let's see how we're going to do that. There's a little formula we're going to be following which is going to help us. A inverse is equal to the reciprocal of the determinant, so 1 divided by a determinant multiplied by the transpose of the matrix of cofactors which is also sometimes called the adjoint matrix to A. So for us to successfully find a inverse, we basically need to work all this out first. And there's three pieces here. The first piece is the determinant of A. Second piece is the matrix of cofactors. And the third piece is the transpose of that matrix. So let's do things one step at a time. And let's start with the determinant. So to find the determinant, we need to keep one thing in mind. Because we're working with a three by three matrix, we need to remember the sign values of the different elements in the matrix. And it's just going to be like this. The signs just alternate depending on the element you're at. Just like so. Plus, negative, and plus. And this is going to be very important for when we find the determinant and the cofactors, as you're about to see. So let's get started with finding this determinant. We're going to start with this first element here. And we're going to cross this row, the row that intersects at this element, and cross the column that intersects at this element. That's going to leave us with this mini four two by two matrix, so four elements two by two matrix. And then what we need to do is just find the determinant of that. So that's going to be minus one multiplied by minus four, which is going to give us minus four. 
and we're going to subtract from that 2 multiplied by minus 3, which is minus 6. And then that whole sum is going to be multiplied by 3. So let's write it down. So the determinant of A is equal to 3 multiplied by minus 1 multiplied by minus 4. And we subtract from that 2 multiplied by minus 3. Okay, and now we move from this element to this one, and we do the same thing. We look at the row that intersects at that element, we look at the column that intersects at that element, cross them out, and that leaves us with a matrix, a 2 by 2 matrix, with 2, 1, 2, and minus 4, and then we find the determinant of that. So we've got 2 multiplied by minus 4, which is minus 8, and we subtract from that 2 times 1, and we multiply that by 2. So we're going to put minus 2 here. The reason we're putting minus, remember, is because we are now looking at this element. So in this position, the value is negative. And we're going to do 2 times minus 4. Take away 2 times 1. And we've got one more to do. So now we've done this one, we've done this one, we move over to this one. And we cross the intersecting row, cross the intersecting column. That leaves us with this 2 by 2 matrix. So we do 2 times minus 3, take away minus 1 times 1, multiplied by minus 1. So we've got minus 1 multiplied by 2 times minus 3, and take away from that minus 1 times 1. Okay, so let's put all this together and see what we get. So the determinant of A is equal to, let's start with this, minus 1 multiplied by minus 4 is going to be positive 4. 2 multiplied by minus 3 is going to be negative 6. So 4 take away negative 6 is going to be plus 10. And 10 multiplied by 3 gives us 30. So that's that. Now we've got this bit over here. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. And 2 times 1 is, of course, 2. So minus 8 take away 2 is minus 10. And minus 10 multiplied by minus 2 is plus 20. So we've got 20 here. And now we've got 2 times minus 3, which is minus 6. Let's try that again. And we've got minus 1 multiplied by 1, which is minus 1. And minus 6 take away negative 1 is going to be minus 5 multiplied by minus 1 is going to be plus 5. So that's going to give us 5 over here. And the total is 55. And that is the determinant of this matrix. Okay, so with the determinant out of the way, the next step is for us to find the cofactor matrix. So let's see how we're going to do that. The work we need to do to find the cofactor matrix is quite similar to what we've done to find the determinant. So it's going to be a lot of repetition. I'm going to do the first two rows and then I'm just going to skip the last one and fill the numbers in because it's going to be quite boring for you to watch. So let's do the first two rows and let's start by creating our cofactor matrix. To find the first element of this matrix, we're going to look at the first element of A. And again, we're going to do the crossing rows and crossing columns business. So we're going to cross this row, cross this column, and we're going to find the determinant of this 2 by 2. So it's going to be minus 1 multiplied by minus 4. And if you notice, we've already done this calculation, so we don't need to do it again. It's already been done here. So we know that that is going to be 10. So we're just looking at what's inside this brackets here. We're not going to multiply by 3 outside because we're not finding the determinant this time. So that's just going to be 10. And the second one, uh, again, we can shortcut and just look at what's inside these brackets, but let's make sure we're doing it correctly. So we're looking at this element now. Cross the row, cross the column. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Take away 2 times 1 is going to give us minus 10. But don't forget that we're looking at this element. So we need to make sure that we multiply by minus 1. And that's going to give us 10. And the last element is going to give us, we can look inside this bracket to find the answer, it's going to be minus 6 take away minus 1, which is minus 5. Cool. All right. For the second row now, we're going to have to do exactly the same thing, but rather than doing this row, we need to do this row. So let's see how that's going to work. We start from this element, cross the row, cross the column, 
that leaves us with this mini matrix. So we've got two minus one, minus three and minus four. So we're gonna have to do two times minus four, which is minus eight. And then we do minus one multiplied by minus three, which is positive three. So we've got minus eight, take away positive three, which is minus 11. But don't forget, there's a negative sign here at this position. So we're gonna multiply minus 11 by minus one, and that's gonna give us 11. All right, let's do one more, and then I'll do the rest myself. So we've got minus one, let's cross the intersecting column, cross the intersecting row. That leaves us with three times minus four, which is minus 12. And then we're gonna take away from that negative one. So minus 12, take away negative one is minus 11. And just like that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back everybody. So I've gone ahead and filled out this cofactor matrix and hopefully you can verify that these numbers are correct. And what we need to do now is simply transpose this because according to our formula, we are after the transpose of this matrix. So let's go ahead and do that. And to transpose is very easy. We just change the columns into rows and vice versa. So this first column here is gonna become our first row. So we do 10, 11, and three. So make a new matrix here. C, T is equal to, we've got 10, 11, and three. And this second column is gonna be our second row. So 10 minus 11 minus eight. 10 minus 11 minus eight. And this last column is gonna be our last row. So minus five. 11 and minus seven. So minus five, 11 and minus seven. Cool. Okay, so we're ready now to write out our solution. So let's see what that's gonna look like. Our vector of unknowns is x, y, and z. And we now know that this is equal to the inverse of a, and we have all the pieces for that now. We have the determinant, we have the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So we can write that out. That is gonna be one divided by 55. And I'm using this formula here. And we're gonna multiply this by the matrix of cofactors transposed. And now we're gonna multiply this by our vector of constants, which is four, 10, and five. Awesome, and now we are ready to find our final numbers. So let's work with x first. To find x, we need to multiply this column. We need to take the dot product of this column with this vector, and that is gonna be 10 times four, which is 40. So that is gonna be 40 plus 11 times 10, which is 110 plus three times five, which is 15. Okay, and don't forget, we have one over 55 outside, so we need to divide all of this by 55. And if you do the maths, this should come out to be three. And let's do the same thing for y. So y is gonna be equal to this row multiplied by this column vector. So that's gonna be 10 times four, which is again 40 plus minus 11 times minus 10. So it shouldn't be a plus there, it should be minus 110 and minus eight times five, which is minus 40. And don't forget one over 55 outside. So this is all gonna be equal to minus two. And our final element is gonna be this row here multiplied by this vector. So that leaves us with minus five times four, which is 20 plus 11 times 10, which is 110 and minus seven times five, which is 35. And of course, one over 55 outside. And this gives us one. So these are the values for X, Y, and Z that satisfy these three simultaneous equations right here. So as you can see, this is a whole bunch of work just to find three numbers, right? And in practice, unless you're preparing for an exam, nobody really does this by hand. 
especially in areas like data science, machine learning, robotics. These things are all done computationally. So let's go over to the computer and I'll see you right there. All right, everybody. So here I am and I've fired up uh, Python inside my computer and we're ready to go. So I'm going to be using the SymPy library to solve this problem. You don't have to use SymPy. You can use NumPy or anything else. But I'm going to be using SymPy because it allows you to print things and sort of visualize them really nicely, which is cool. So let's go ahead and import SymPy as sim. And I'm also going to import from SymPy, import everything. And I'm also going to initialize the printing functionality so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to be using Unicode. OK, and let's hit run. All right, now it's time for us to define our matrices. So I'm going to go ahead and define our A matrix. And I'm going to say A is equal to matrix. And I'm just telling Python here that I'm defining a matrix. These are the outside brackets of the matrix. And these are going to be the individual rows. So we have three rows. And in our first row, we have three, two, and minus one. Second row is two minus one and two. Third row is one minus three and minus four. Okay, and we can also define our constants, our vector of constants. That's going to be a matrix with three rows and one column. Okay, so this is going to be four, 10, and five. Awesome. So let that run. Okay, cool. And just for visualization purposes, let's see what matrix A looks like. And there you go. How cool is that? I'm going to delete these cells because I don't really need them. So let's go back. And now let's solve our problem. So if you recall, the way we solved the problem was by multiplying the inverse of the matrix A with the vector K. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say A to the power of minus one, and I'm going to multiply this by the vector k. And let's see what we get. There you go. That is the problem solved inside of Python, and that's literally just a handful of lines of code. And we managed to solve a problem that previously took, well, I don't know how long it took, but it was quite a long time. And that's it. That's the power of Python for you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Take care and bye for now.